how you can travel the world with sleep apnea and a CPAP machine. Okay, sync the audio. Boof. Taking a little drink of coffee. It's the afternoon time. Um, we're just gonna go for it. How you can travel the world with sleep apnea and a CPAP machine, mistakes, lessons learned, tactics, and gear. I don't know the camera's focused on me. So this guide includes checklists, gear, mistakes I made, hard won lessons learned, and the do's and don'ts of traveling with sleep apnea and your CPAP machine. This is the guide I wish that I had had a few years ago back in 2014 when I was diagnosed with sleep apnea and simultaneously, not simultaneously actually, I was diagnosed with sleep apnea and a couple years later found myself in a very amazing position to be able to travel a good amount, um, both domestically and internationally for work. And I'd been traveling before that um, with mixed experiences of being able to manage my sleep apnea or not. And this is something I wish I had. I wish I had had some sort of guidance on this specific topic of traveling with sleep apnea. It's not something that He's talked about that often. Some of the resources out there feel very prescriptive and sort of like superficial level. Um, while somewhat helpful, you know, they do get into tactics. I really don't feel like they dive deep. So this is my hope. This is my answer to that is, you know, to hope to dive deep into this topic with you and for you. So yeah, this is, exists in a blog post form and I'm going to give you more I'm going to give you more in depth and more of the sort of couple more of a couple of ridiculous stories that I felt were really relatable um, especially when it comes to the anxiety and the struggle of sleep apnea and I mean you know traveling has its own anxieties without having a sleep disorder. So add this to the mix and it feels like a lot. The one thing I hope people take away from this content is a better sense of there's other people in this with you. Um, I hope that it makes you laugh because I, 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 looking back on experiences, I find them pretty funny, uh, even when at the time they weren't not so funny. And But the, the biggest thing is some insight and a system of rules that you can take with you and use. That's my, my big hope for, for this piece of content for you. So let's, without further ado, dive in. I'm going to read this. I'm going to try not to be too performative, um, but some parts of it were written more as to be kept in written form, and I'm breaking that, that form now. So. Let the fun begin. Mexico City Airport, 8 p.m. It keeps my throat open so I don't choke in my sleep. This is a medical device. Had I missed the Spanish class where we learned phrases about CPAP machines? I was stumbling over words half Spanish, half English, and I look like a total idiot. It's a sleep sueño apnea machine para para lucky for me this conversation was happening exclusively inside my head feeling burnt out after about eight and a half hours of travel from san francisco i was dreading the awkward conversation ahead i was trying and failing to create a script for the impending explanation i would need to give to the customs agent i knew one thing though there was a direct connection between how close i got to customs and how much i was sweating Looking at the 200 people in front of me, though, it seemed that I had about an hour left to practice my Spanish and soak in my perspiration. Then, I was waved by with barely a look. It turns out that my experience is pretty standard with CPAP machines in most of the world, and definitely across North America. My fears of being strip-searched in a foreign country did not come to pass, and I learned that my anxiety could have been cured with a little research and polling fellow CPAP users. 
so breaking from the script a little bit here, um, a lot of people who are traveling for the first time with sleep apnea have this big worry that they're going to get pulled over as if they are smuggling drugs across borders. And the truth is, it's sleep apnea and CPAP machines are so common at this point that it's become mostly a non-issue. I go into a little more detail. I will go into a little more detail on this, but for the most part, it's not really something to be so worried about as far as getting your CPAP on the plane, that is, or into an airport. The main thing I want to delve into at the beginning here is uh, is planning ahead. This has saved me a lot of trouble. Not planning ahead has got gotten me into a lot of trouble. So planning ahead and self-advocacy, or as I like to say, taking your sleep and your health into your own hands. I'm going to need confirmation that we are definitely not staying in a tent. Although it didn't show, I was nervous to tell my coworker that in fact I could not sleep outside in a giant tent on the sands of the Negev Desert in Israel. Fact check, Negev Desert, if that's where it is. As romantic as a night sky full of stars sounds to me, the thought of my CPAP machine getting clogged with sand or having to compete with 40 college students for space in the power strip where their phones were plugged in was giving me heart palpitations. The truth is, I hate the challenges that come with sleep apnea. But this is an unfortunate part of the reality of the condition. There are times that you'll need to plan far in advance to make sure you have accommodations set up for your condition. Even with planning, things can go pretty wrong. Anyways, the conversation with my coworker was a, a tough one, but it worked out. And at the end of the day, they actually got me a room at the campsite. It was more of a bungalow. I let the collegiates enjoy the night stars and waking up with sand in their hair. So I'm going to skip this checklist for accommodations and I, I will put it in the notes for this video or you can check it out on the blog post um, at the link that is attached. But in summary, as far as, as planning ahead, you know, checking for, for electricity, checking the voltage of what is needed in the place you're staying, obviously write down the answers. This is such a stupid thing for me to have to tell you, but like I'm guilty of not writing things down and then I've wasted my time. So um, also be as clear as possible. The term having electricity can be interpreted differently by many different people. And when you ask someone about this, they might assume that you're worried about your iPhone battery and not about, you know, making sure that you have a, a medical condition that you need to take care of. So I don't want to sound too dramatic, but we're not really f***ing around. This is our health that we're worried about in this planning phase. So you know, what, what is the point of a vacation if you spend half the time in a brain fog um, or a stupor or worse, like sleep deprived? There's no point is the answer to that question. And I think this might sound a little overkill to some people, but knowing every night of the itinerary has helped me a lot. And this comes from my days of running trips with students where I'm the one in charge. And not only do I need to be responsible for my sleep, and my well-being, I'm also responsible at the end of the day for their day-to-day -day lives for up to 21 days at a stretch. So this is sort of an inadvertent thing I picked up, which was pouring over day-to-day, -day, what's my itinerary? If you're planning a family vacation, it's not that different. It's actually a lot easier than what I'm talking about, but just knowing where are you staying every night and what are the accommodations gonna include. My dog is looking at me like I'm crazy. He's looking at the camera because I'm talking to you instead of him. <laughs> I want to delve into a quick note on packing, sanity, anxiety, and being quote unquote organized. I put the words organized in quotes because I don't consider myself to be a type A quote unquote person by nature. I honestly used to hate lists and essays and organization and anything that felt really overly structured. That being said, Structures and lists and organization and rules have really helped me keep sanity in my daily life, and especially when traveling. This has also enabled me to feel the freedom to thrive in chaos and chaotic situations, um, but that's probably for another day. Quick note on just the basics of this. I see people post in forums, should I bring my CPAP when I travel? And I'm pretty confused when I see that because 
I don't really get why you would consider not bringing your CPAP. I, well, I guess I do get it because people don't really want to deal with it. Um, to me at this point, the downside of not bringing your CPAP is enough so that I would never leave it behind. Um, and I have, and I have what would be considered light sleep apnea. So <clears throat> it seems like a silly thing in my, in my mind. This next section, this should be a section break to my editing self who will be editing this later. Maybe I'll leave this part in for your, for your pleasure, viewing pleasure of my internal thoughts. But this is a section break about checklists and apps. Um, there are countless list apps out there. I personally use one called Asana, A-S-A-N-A, -A -A, and I'll put it, I'll link it in the notes. And honestly, it's just really simple to use. Um, I break my list, go into the list a little bit here. I break my list into different sections, um, and those sections are. Well, I should. I'm gonna. I'm gonna zoom out for a second. I break my list into two types of list: domestic travel and international travel. Partially because the needs are, the principles are the same, but the needs are different enough that I don't like to keep them on the same list because then I start to ignore things on the list if they don't apply. So. Um, Here's the, my, my headers for my list is morning of, my CPAP bag, my carry-on bag, and my checked bag. So those are my four sections. These are separated out. Morning of is because generally speaking, or it should be called day of really, generally speaking when I travel, I pack the night before, a few days, begin packing a few days before, but there's always those last few things that are likely to get left behind, which or things you tend to use the night before you travel, including your CPAP machine, your toothbrush, maybe some other toiletries, and for me, sweatpants, which I may or may not wear while I'm sleeping. So those are my morning of things that need to be checked off the list the day that I travel, the day of list. Um, it seems silly, but this has actually helped me a lot. Um, how many times have you forgotten your toothbrush, which is not that big a deal, but when you're tired out of your brain and you need to find one, it sucks, but leaving your CPAP machine is a no-go. So day of is a section of the packing list. It's its own section. The CPAP bag, I have my own checklist for this for these reasons. I once slept for three days without my machine in the last few years, and that was because I forgot a crucial piece, which is a gasket piece that you need to take out and switch over. Uh, I'm not gonna get into the details of it, um, but that one little thing made it so I couldn't sleep with my machine, which really ruined four days of, to a week of my life. Um, on my CPAP bag list is switch the humidifier cover. This is the same thing. It's attached to a piece of the machine for my SoClean 2, um, which I did a video on. You can click that here uh, or somewhere in the notes. But switching the humidifier cover was also it made it non-functional if I didn't do this. The CPAP machine itself, the body, the hose and mask are usually inseparable. And then I have in giant bold letters, dump the humidifier water. Um, there was a time when I almost ruined my thousand dollar machine, which I was paying out of pocket for by just forgetting to dump the humidifier water. And luckily there was only this much left, but had it been full, I would have been effed. Power cord, etc. I'm not gonna read all of my lists. You can find them in the, in the notes, but those are my big headers and a little bit of detail. Okay, I want to talk about one of my favorite things. This brings me so much joy to talk about this because when I discovered it, it was amazing. This isn't so much relevant specifically to CPAP users, but it does help if you get TSA pre-check. So TSA pre-check and global entry. Um, I can't overstate how amazing this is. If you've already, if you have this already, you, you know. Um, but it means that you don't need to take off your belt. You don't need to take off your shoes. You can leave your CPAP in its bag, your laptop. So for someone like me who actually sometimes travels with a good amount of gear when I'm not being minimalist, um, you know, that's just six more things that I don't have to do. I can leave my laptop in. I don't, if I'm bringing a camera or something that can stay in the bag. It's just, it's so amazing. And also it's always got me like it's the express lane basically like i've cut the line not cut the line but i've beat the line that i'm looking at over there with a couple hundred people um so 
It's unreal. I never got global entry, but you should do it because it costs a few extra bucks and it gets you global entry and TSA pre. So those go hand in hand. Um, yeah, it's unreal. There was one time that it didn't really do me much. I don't think. Uh, and that was at the world's busiest airport, I believe is the standard. Uh, uh, the, there was one time that it didn't do, do much for me, which is in the Atlanta airport. And I believe that's the world's busiest airport, but I'll fact check myself on that. Getting through security. So here's the thing. As I said before, uh, CPAP is pretty standard at this point, so it's not really a big deal. But that being said, I wanna read you a little bit of an excerpt from my blog post. Getting through security, TSA. Should I take out my CPAP machine? I said, hoping the answer would be no. The first agent made full eye contact, waved me by with a steady frown and a lazy hand. Thanks, I said, and placed my gear and zipped up CPAP machine on the conveyor. All electronics come out of the bag, announced TSA agent number two, loud enough for everyone to hear, looking me dead in the eyes and pointing to my bag. At this point, I just had a stunned face, resisting the urge to roll my eyes like a 15-year-old. Please note that agent number one and number two were standing not 10 feet away from each other, but clearly disagreed, disagreed about the rules. So, although you cannot please everyone, here are some best practices and tips. Carry your doctor's note. I have never needed to produce a doctor's note ever for my CPAP, even when stopped to be, quote, randomly, unquote, searched in Copenhagen. That being said, I have always had it with my CPAP, just in case. I always take out my CPAP unless explicitly told otherwise. So my default is just to take out the CPAP and assume that they want me to take it out. Um, it just makes things smoother if I assume they want to see everything that's in my bag. Or not everything, but you know what I mean. With the exception of the aforementioned TSA pre-check and or global entry. Do not take your bag out of your CPAP out. So that's my quick and dirty TSA section. Flying with your CPAP. So first off, never, this is bold, all caps, like never, ever, ever check your CPAP machine ever. I don't care if it's even one of those travel CPAP machines, which are awesome. I did, did a video on that, which I will link here, but never, just never do it because statistically speaking, you, your baggage will get lost at some point. Just, it's, it's just, it's an in almost an inevitability. Um, so losing your CPAP for a week, are you willing to take that risk? I am not. So it's coming with me all the time. Um, so here's the thing, because it's a medical device, you pretty much can, it doesn't count. Because it's a medical device, it doesn't count, does not count towards your allowance of bags. Um, and I've actually been, I've had a, I've actually had someone say to me, sir, you know, you need to check that bag. Uh, you've got too many bags. And I said, oh, this is a medical device. And they didn't even, they just, you know, I got that wave. Move it along. <laughs> um, in a similar vein, you know, in transit, this is uh, this applies to flights, but taxis, Ubers, lifts. Just always keep, to me, my CPAP has the same rules as my phone, wallet, and keys. They are always on me, on my person. So my CPAP is always either, you know, I have it over my shoulder or it's sitting on my lap when I go somewhere. Because to me, if I put my backpack in the back of a lift and they drive off with my things, I will be very, very upset, but I will still be able to sleep that night. And that is pretty key. So health is wealth. <laughs> CPAP on planes. So what is the deal with being able to sleep with a CPAP on a plane? Um, I will be honest with you. I have not successfully slept on a plane with a CPAP, not because of the CPAP, but because of my own discomfort with planes sleeping. This might change. Who knows? Hopefully by the time you're watching this or some years or months from now, I will be able to say, here's how you sleep on a plane. And if so, there'll be a link to that video. Um, 
but at the moment i'm just not a plain sleeper and it means that my rules for travel are very different than some other people that being said um i do encourage you if you're going to sleep on the plane i would strongly encourage you to sleep with your sleep cpap machine so that's where things like a resmed air mini could come in where you're not trying to like lug around this big thing but you've got the very small form factor um, of a travel sleep app machine but you basically need to check the f a a and government rules about using the machine on the plane because it's a medical device i believe that it is allowed i'm not going to try to weigh in on it on a video here because those rules are liable to change but if i find something you'll see it below in the links window seat versus aisle seat the times that I can tolerate the window seat are the times that I've almost successfully slept on a plane. So those are the times that, you know, no one's going to like wake you up, etc. And you're not in the middle, which is honestly the worst. Um, so window seat, if you're not like me and you can like, you can tolerate, let's say six to 12 hours, whatever length of your flight is of not getting up to pee or only doing so once or twice. Um, that's window seat. Personally, I opt for the aisle seat because I prioritize being able to get up whenever I want instead of feeling trapped by two strangers. But obviously, if you're traveling with friends and family, consult them. Plain pillows. There's some cool stuff out there, especially inflatable things that don't take up very much room in your bag, but then once on the plane can be inflated. I'm going to link to them. I won't try to cover that here. Um, and then I will say stretching is key. So doing that before and also hydrating on the flight are also key. Traveling, hotels, and etc. So hotels and arrival at your destination. This is uh, some nitty gritty stuff, but I think it's worth putting in here. Um, back in college, I, when I, before I would go out for the night, perhaps drinking, gentleman never tells, um, I, there was two things I always did. I always made my bed and I always filled my water bottle that was going to, that I would come back to. This is because the later version of myself would be too tired and potentially inebriated to do things like make my bed that I wanted to just crawl into and go fill my water bottle. So then this prevented me from skipping on hydration. Granted, obviously you should hydrate while you're out. The point being that when I got back, I would always hydrate. It was right there waiting for me. I still apply this today when it comes to travel. I don't really go out that much anymore, uh, at least not for the same purposes. <laughs> um, so when I get to a hotel, the things that I do right after putting my bag down and like ideally before I even like lay back on the bed is I unpack my CPAP machine. This is because this is the equivalent of making your bed like if you're, especially if you're going to go out later, your future self will thank you. <laughs> um, so just doing that in advance is so key. Um, and I also fill my water, my, my humidifier with water, um, which ideally I have bought on my way to the hotel or whatever it is. The other thing I do is I go see where the hotel gym is because this is something I picked up from uh, BJ Fogg behavioral psychologist, I believe at Stanford, um, who he talks about habits. And what this does is it removes the barrier of trying to figure out where the gym is and then not going. So CPAP down and set up humidifier filled, and then see where the gym is if you're someone who wants to be better about working out because then you know how to get there. Your brain doesn't have to do any work to get there. So this is removing the barriers to success. Oh, I also jump on the bed because it's a hotel and that's what you're supposed to do. So that's three things. What about distilled water? I, it's too exhaustive to go into distilled water in this post. But I mean, one thing I can think of is that like, pretend you're in Mexico, I guess. Like when I was in Mexico, in Mexico City, and they said, you know, don't drink the water. I'm not going to put water in a humidifying chamber that I wouldn't drink. So honestly, the one of the first things I did besides the things I just mentioned, what is to put, is to go get bottled water. Um, luckily in places like Mexico, depending where you're staying, 
highly dependent on where you're staying. It's pretty standard to have bottled water around, so it wasn't such a big deal. Obviously, this depends on hotel versus hostel versus friend's house, whatever, but I digress. And obviously, on my packing list, this is sort of a random thing, but uh, remember your adapter for your machine, and I will link to the one that I have. All right, this is my gear section. Um, some things that I want to mention here are the is getting a sleep mask for your for your eyes. I don't use this at home. I don't like to use it when I don't have to, but ambient light does affect your sleep. I'll link to things about that. Um, this is the gear section. I'm going to give you just my bullet list of things that I think are helpful um, for travel with sleep apnea and maybe some things that are sort of related, but not necessarily for travel. So the first one would be considering a, a travel machine. If you do spend a good amount of your year percentage of your year traveling, um, it's nice. It's very nice to have less to carry, less to worry about. Um, especially if you're doing something like a cross country road trip, let's say, or, you know, you're, you have to pack a bunch of other gear. So you're trying to, you know, each thing becomes an added uh, uh, burden for you. So a travel machine like the ResMed Air Mini might work for you. There's also the, uh, uh, crap, the other one that I'm forgetting the name of. Anyways, sleep eye mask is key. I will make a probably a separate video on light and ambient light in, in, in the room. And I'll link to some articles if possible, but just keeping your eyes Keeping the light out of your eyes while you're sleeping is key. So other gear, extension cord, I don't think is necessary unless you think you're going to be staying somewhere that doesn't have the requisite outlet every six feet, which is generally speaking after a certain year in the United States, for example, standard. I like the SoClean too. It's not a travel thing. They do make a travel version. It might've gotten better in the last few years. There's also a bunch of travel CPAP sanitizers. I don't recommend this for shorter trips, but I think if you are doing a longer, like, uh, you know, international, let's say you're living somewhere for six months, I would say invest in a, in a sanitizer. I think it's good to have to use to sort of fight back bacterial things in your CPAP machine. You can check out my, my so clean review, uh, linked where appropriate. Pillows, again, pillow technology, is that a thing? Pillow technology has come a long way and I will link to some good stuff. My favorite headphones that are sitting right there right now, um, the Bose QuietComfort 35s. I'm not joking, I've wa I wanted those before they existed. I was had my eye on the QC, whatever they're called, 15s by Bose. Um, traveling with noise canceling headphones is amazing. Um, especially on long trips where there's a lot of people and I, I'm, I as, as a 50% or 51% introvert type person, the ability to just be in my own world by putting on headphones is unreal. Um, but also on airplanes specifically, the drowning out of that droning noise that you don't notice, but then realize you have a headache. They are very helpful with that. So when I was traveling six hours, 10 hours, you know, 10, whatever amount of flights, the Bose QuietComfort 35s, so there might be something more advanced now are amazing. Uh, I think the Beats are probably equivalent. If you, <laughs> I don't really buy into the hype of like this sort of like the overdone bass like, I think if you want to change the EQ on your iPhone, you could just do that manually. You don't need, like, beats to, like, be like, oh, bass is the best thing. Um, but maybe that's a debate for another day. So quiet comfort or another equivalent noise-canceling headphones are unreal. Price tag is, is, I would say, pretty high, but worth it. I've had mine for years. That's... The guide to traveling with sleep apnea. I hope this helps you. And if you comment your travel sleep apnea questions or stories below, I will be. I would love to hear from you. Um, I will link everything that you need below. 
and I'll see you in your dreams. <laughs>